we just saw the latest live stream development update a few days ago and we're happy. Wait for it. 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 Keep waiting. I found a flaw that could be an issue. I know, I know, what is it now? I think the AI voice acting is a great addition, but what does that look like a few years from now? So let's talk about why Jordan is better than AI. Get it? It's basketball. Man, whatever, start the video, man. So again, let me start out by saying that I think the AI voice acting addition is dope. We are in a time where there should be no reason that we aren't able to get the very best when it comes to video games, especially MMOs, destructible environment, interactive NPCs and mobs, and of course, voiceovers. Thank the gods you've arrived safely. All of these things are going to provide a more in-depth experience for the player. And when you're crafting a world with many different moving parts for many different people, you're gonna wanna keep them immersed. But in this specific scenario though, if it's not managed properly, this could lead to something that's not the desired outcome. As we prepare to go into the Ashes of Creation Alpha 2, we want everything to be as polished as possible. We've waited years to play this game. So of course it's good news that Intrepid has decided to put more voice acting in the game. Since this isn't done too much, I think initially, this is going to put Ashes of Creation head and shoulders above the rest, at least in terms of innovation. If Intrepid can succeed in doing this, then plan on seeing other companies do this as well, but to an extended height. It's a cool new shiny toy, if you would. And the way Intrepid works, I'm sure it's going to come out phenomenally. I also think it's great that they're taking people that are currently working at Intrepid and putting them into the world of Vera. Super nice touch, and it makes everything a bit more personal. All right, Q. So it sounds like you're in favor of the AI change. So what are you really saying? My biggest question would be, when does it stop? AI is creating a quest. Okay, now AI has created all of the quest. AI is creating a specific biome. Now they're creating all of the DLCs. Now they're creating games, other pieces of media, even your favorite content creators. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. You may think I'm jumping the gun on this situation, but I think where we are in today's society and with how fast technology is moving, this very well could be a reality within the next few years. Now, it doesn't just have to be Ashes of Creation because MMOs come out every year trying to scam the player base. This is another reason I say that we're going to start to see other companies try their hand at this because there's money to be made here. So with that in mind, and I'm not saying Ashes of Creation is trying to scam their audience, but how far do they want to push AI? The less you know, Eugene, the better. When it comes to using AI in video games, I think the best way to go about it is to use it in increments. Use it for things that may require some touch-ups, altering a voice or altering a setting, changing the paintings on the walls in the game. You get what I'm saying. Really, really small changes. The reason I feel this way is because I'm super big on human creativity as an actor, musician, writer, etc. myself. And I love the creative process of sitting down, getting ideas out, and then putting them into a project. Now, AI is a part of creativity as well. And again, AI is in everything now. So there's no running from it. You either adapt or get swept away. So now with this in mind, what situations would be best suited for us to use AI in a way that's not overbearing for the players, but still effective for the game? We obviously don't know what else Ashes of Creation has in store for the rest of the game since we're in Alpha 2, but I really do think that we need to be careful when we're opening up these doors, because sometimes they end up taking us much further than we wanted to go initially. I would hate for us to get in a place in Ashes of Creation where it feels like we can't return because we're too far gone with what AI has done to the game. I feel like the crazy guy in movies that's telling you about the end of the world. It's like, AI, AI, 
He's not playing basketball anymore. He's coming to take over your game and your life. Yeah, it's kind of cringe. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> when we talk about how far AI can go, what other effects could it have on Ashes of Creation or upcoming projects? We're specifically talking about voiceovers. So, do we get to a point where real voice actors won't be needed? I mean, think about it. There are already so many different samples for voices out there that AI could come up with, with a unique one within seconds. What does it do to the people actually working on the project? We could get a huge project in the future that was created with far less human talent, but an increased amount of AI. From what we know about Steven, I don't think he let any of this happen. I could see AI becoming more prominent in Ashes of Creation, but I don't think he'd ever let it get to the point where people are losing their livelihood over it. I truly believe he values the creative process that they have at Intrepid and wants to continue to build on it. What if down the road though, say three or four years, AI has grown so much that Steven has to put more and more into the game. I mean, or maybe he stay true to his word and keep going at the pace that they are. But then think about all the money and time that we'd be saved. But Steven has a moral compass. But the money, I mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Look, let me just say this. There's a lot of talent out there if you're looking to hire for voice work, Steven, and for cheap, right? I at least know how to uh, six other people that might do it, possibly even for free. Okay, so if you come into my mansion and you say, hey, I want you to do this work, then we might have a deal, right? All in all, I don't think any of this would happen anytime soon. But we must be ready at all times. And speaking of all times, yo, 18 freaking days until we're finally able to play Alpha 2. You know your boy's gonna be streaming, fiending, playing, slaying. So yo, man, come rock out with us. I know some of you guys are still looking for a guild and a community. So go create that Ashes of Creation account and come chill with us. I think the main focus for October is going to be Alpha 2 in itself. So I'm sure Intrepid is going to have a lot of stuff planned. I know they chatted about events going on during these phases. They've dropped a few photos giving away Alpha 2 keys, and I'm sure we'll see more community oriented things. I'm going to be doing another giveaway here soon as well, because I still have a few keys left over. It'll more likely be a giveaway just like last time. So be sure to stay locked in for that since we only have three weeks left. A quick heads up too, for those that have gotten the key before, I think those keys end up giving you Alpha 2 access on November 8th and not October 25th because it's just an Alpha 2 key and not a PI, Alpha 1, or Anisha Alpha 2 key. I'll talk more about it in another video. There was one more point that I wanted to make before the end of the video. Look, man, AI is starting to fight back. It's it's, it's getting scary out here. I want you guys to know this. And honestly, I think I, I think they're even listening to me. The screen is getting darker. They're, they're, they're here. They're, listen, I need your help. I really need your help. Please, listen, you are the only one that can save the world right now. It's up to you. And we have to stop the robots. What's going on around here?